What's going on people, welcome to 127 Works, and today we're having a look at this. This is TCG Card Shop Simulator, so it's a bit different, I know, it's like when I posted Fortnite a couple weeks ago. But yeah, I will do like a channel update by the way as well, if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff, I'll do a channel update at the end of this video. But I'll just start off by saying first and foremost, I had a tooth out today, so if I sound weird or look weird or speech isn't 100% on the, on the money, that's why, so I'll just get that out of the way. But yeah, so this is TCG Card Shop Simulator, and it's been my absolute jam for the last like 3, 4, 5 days. I've been kind of stuck at home with this tooth problem for the last week or so and this has been absolutely just kind of getting me through out of something to do and a way to spend some time that's like literally i've put in like multiple real life eight hour day shifts like into this game so but yeah but so it's just it's been absolutely fantastic if you don't know anything about me i used to work in the video game section of a toy shop here in ireland so this kind of work actually was generally my day to day for a big part of my life and then also around that time as well i was going through like a collector phase where i was into pokemon i collected pokemon cards for a bit like there's still a heap of them over there in my little near corner thing i went through a phase of collecting match attacks cards which again as an adult is a bit strange but I just I went through a phase of being a bit of a magpie I just wanted the next shiny thing to pop out of the pack that I was opening so this game actually kind of scratches a lot of those itches for me and um, it's got the whole kind of like like set up your shop placing things getting the get, get the OCD with how you place things and lay things out and stuff like that and then also with the, with the card collection TCG element of it to be able to open packs on the whim and just constantly keep open buying boxes and packs and all the kinds of yeah get that little sit that little endorphin hit of getting the, the shiny card the, the big number come out and stuff like that it's all of that and if it's like it's like 12.75 it's an early access at the moment it's like less than 15 euro and so I've just been having a blast and I just thought I would show you not necessarily how the game works but I would show you my world so as you can see at the top left here I'm on day 56 it is at 9pm so I've just finished the, the 56 day and I've the store is closed and I've restocked it repacked it got it ready for the next day and then over there you'll probably be able to tell that I am level shop level 26 so I'm actually not that high and I've only got 945 euro in my money basically and that's just basically because i'm not min maxing it i don't think that's a fun way to play the game i don't think that's an interesting way to, to play a game like this like it's good obviously if you want to do like the best possible get the most amount of xp and, and, and money and fun, all that kind of stuff yeah fair enough for me the fun is just kind of like having fun and it's not trying to get the absolute utmost out of it so i'll just go in and show you the shop essentially so this is the default position for the cash register so i've just left that here and it's changed of course as you expand the shop as you buy new things as you add new shelves stuff like that it's constantly changing and expanding and again not optimized but it's just the, this is the layout that i kind of that i that I have been enjoying. Essentially the gist is the fundamentals of it, aside from all the other collectors bits and bobs, the idea is that you buy and sell these cards. So they all come in different, it's, it's again it's based on like a Pokemon style idea. So starting with basic in blue, rare in orange, epic in purple and legendary then in red. So that's the base kind of set so you can get your standard cards and your hollow cards and stuff like that of the different levels in that one and then there's what they call the destiny which is the next level up. So it's basically from what I can tell it's the same level of cards but with a special kind of art background art and, and so like the same graphics same stats and all kinds of stuff from what i can tell but they have different backgrounds so i get into that as i open packs in the later on in the episode and stick around i will be open packs later on in the episode if that's the kind of thing to get you into but again you've got boxes like you've got stuff like sleeves the different variety of sleeves that you can offer different card boxes so again very very strongly based on pokemon and then yeah just like things like comic books got your displays here so i've got like these are displays of all my full art cards i won't go through each one individually but yeah if you don't add about pokemon you know obviously full arts tend to be the kind of rarest ones so they're the first and they're, they're roughly in order of the ones that of the order that i pulled in. the very first one ever was this one here that's what it looks like and then yeah this one here is the really valuable card so this one i think is the most valuable card i have i want to say it's like two grand i'm not 100 sure but it's very very expensive and then this is the ghost card so this is the first one i only pulled this last night it is luca dense and it is you know again it's like equivalent to like a full art kind of crazy pokemon card that you can get and again that one's not the most expensive i think it's only about 400 quid but it's it's it's, it's pretty solid then you can sell on the cards individually so what you can do the way to, to make money back off your cards is number one you can sell them off individually by placing them in one of these little card tables and then like you can click on the price set the price according to the market price and all that again it's very in-depth i'm not going to show you how to how to play the game but just to give you an explanation of what you're actually looking at if this is brand new to you so for example this one i placed down earlier on and doesn't have a price so this is a flame chick hollow so it's a basic common but it's hollow so it's worth about 638 in the market you can usually with these cards you can mark them up about 30 percent so i will do Pick that three times, round it off to eight quid. So now a customer tomorrow will come in, pick this card up and buy it off me for eight quid. Like it's basically as simple as that. Originally I had them all facing the outside because I was like, you know, pretending that it's like, oh yeah, put them outside, you entice the customers. That doesn't have an actual effect. So I have just kind of assorted in order of most expensive, I'm pretty sure. Or I did at least before I restocked them. But anyway, that's that. Customers can also be smelly. So if you're wondering what these are, these kind of robot looking things, these are de-smellifiers for your customers, for lack of a better term. These will basically, as customers walk through, this is the most efficient 
efficient way to do it. You're supposed to, in theory, set them up in kind of strategic places around the shop to, to spray your customers twice, I think, will get rid of the smell. A little bit of min max that I do is just because I don't want to worry about that, is to just put them either side of your door. These are modded to be in this position. I'll go into the mods that I'm using towards the end of the video. But yeah, basically simple as that. So you set up all your stuff. So this is like collector's edition books, play mats. So I always think of them as mouse pads in my head, but the play mats are like, again, Pokemon TCG, like play mats or whatever. Dice, you've got your eight-sided dice again, because there's a little board game and aspect of it, D&D. Your plushies, so you get your little plushies here you can buy. And then just, this is the individual cleaners, actually, so I can show you, that goes in there. You'll see the little red, it's hard to point out because I would need to pause again, but the little two red lines, that means that these two cans of cleaners that I put in here, one of them was completely empty, the other one was running low. So now I've refilled them. Again, because I'm a bit OCD, I have to put those back up there. But uh, yeah, so that's basically that. So you can sell all your bits and bobs, a few board games here and that kind of thing. So then, yeah, at a certain point, you reach a certain level, a shop level, it's again, at the top right there. You can expand your shop, so you can expand it lengthways and widthways, and then you can unlock the side B, which is this side here. So you can either turn this into another shop, so you can have it be a full, huge, big shop. You can have customers coming in by changing the sign around so now it has no entry because i want it as a storage room so i don't want customers walking in and around and kind of messing up the place in the boxes and stuff but yes it's at storage so that's what i did i bought some storage containers and this is how you get your stuff i'll be using this to open some packs later on and yeah just you know trying to r roughly organize them so cards sleeves boxes the, the the kind of team box team decks or whatever like that just generally trying to keep them organized and again the positioning of these is modded this is something related to that shelf there this is your bulk card sales thing. Once you've opened a bunch of packs and you've gotten a bunch of doubles of, of like cards that are only worth like 15 cents, 30 cents, 1 euro, 50 or whatever that, you can bundle them up and you can sell them on. You don't sell them on for a whole lot. This, for example, these are the Destiny ones. So these are the, the, the rarest ones that I have unlocked at the moment. Each one of these bundles only sells for about 22 quid at the moment based on the market price with the markup that I put on it. And then you do the base buttons and there's also different levels to those. So these, for example, are base bulk boxes, but they are a next level up. So these have more valuable cards, so they'll sell for a bit more. So. But I don't have a shelf for them since there's only two, so that's uh, not exactly something that I'm going to put out. I'm just going to wait until I clear off one of them shelves, basically, and then throw them out there. So that's basically the gist of the shop and how it's laid out. These tables are for people to play the game, so once they buy stuff off you, or, you know, just randomly, they'll come in, play, like, a tournament. So you can click on it, set up the, the kind of game. You don't, it's not an actual game that happens, it's just an animation that plays, basically, for a set period of time. It's 15 euro an hour is what that brings me in, but it costs me 200 quid every day. So 200 quid a day to play, but again, with all these tables, you've got seven tables essentially of people playing anywhere from a couple of minutes of the hour to the entire hour that I'm getting that, that that income. So the level that I'm at and with the settings that I'm using, the way that my shop is run at the moment, I'm getting about 1,200 quid in a, a day, which is not a lot again at this level, but it is what it is. So that's basically that. That is how my shop is laid out at the moment. Again, I'm very early on. I'm, I'm day 56, which might seem like a lot of days in, but it's about 20, 25 hours altogether, I'd say. Steam probably says about 30, 35 hours, but that's a lot of just like, I'll leave it on the background while I'm like, go and have some food or go to the shop or whatever that. But yeah, so that's basically the layout of the shop that I have at the moment as I have it. Again, not the most efficient, not the best way to do it, but it's just how I have it right now and it seems to work for me. Yeah, the last thing then, it is a collectible card game as well as a trading card game. So if I press R now, I can bring up my binder or folder, whatever you want to call it. And you can see here, this is my random collection of cards. I think they're sorted by value maybe at the moment. So it's like ho hover over in there. So this is a, what is this? A fist strunk EX legendary foil. So it's a legendary card from one of the red packs. It's an EX, which means it's basically the best version of that card without being a before becoming a full art. It's, it's a really good card. So it's worth nearly a thousand quid compared to something like this EX that's just an epic. It's only worth 25 and it's not a foil. So it's just an EX Epic and it's it's not a file, so it's only worth 25, it's worth quite a bit less. So you get the gist. Uh, you can also sort it, so if I sort it by number, you can actually then collect them and see what you're missing. So, for example, you've got base card, first edition, silver edition, gold edition, your EX, and then your full art. Then this page will be the exact same thing, but in foil. So essentially, if I can find a, a page where I have, yeah, so for example, yeah, same thing, base card, base card, but foil. Base card is only worth 0 0.03 cents. That one's worth 270 because it's more rare and it's a foil. First edition foil worth 1646, worth 178, non foil. So you can kind of get the gist there. And so you can kind of, again, I'm collecting them at the moment. So I've got some dupes, but uh, yeah, like, so you can either sell them on as, as I was doing on this table out here. These are all duplicates. So this page here, I think was it. So I've got two of these. So I can take out one of these, close the pack, put it here. And now I've still got my one in there. So I'm not missing that from my collection. I've collected 512 out of 1,332 cards. As you can see at the top. I can now sell this on and it's automatically priced because this is probably the best time to get into the mods that I'm using. So I wanted to keep it very vanilla. It's like, it's like with Skyrim, it's like with Fallout. I don't 
don't usually completely overhaul games when I play them. I just add a few tasteful little mods that just make the kind of the experience a little bit better. So in this case, if I press F1, you can see I've got auto light switch, auto set prices, better collision, better POS, hand is not full, and the sound replacer was from one of the Pokemon mods that I just I didn't I didn't quite uninstall all the way. So forget that one. But basically, auto light switch is that you have to pay electricity. So if I switch this light on and off manually, if I switch it on too early, I'm paying a bit more electricity. So you with that with that mod there essentially. Yeah, so if I click in here, so so auto light switch, light on time, 1630. So that's about the time that it gets dark enough that you need it. So now every day at 1630 as the day pans out, it will turn on the light. And then yeah, same thing. So auto set prices, you've got all these different options. It's just basically one of the more tedious parts about it is that every evening or every day you have to go, go through, constantly check the market price, click the market price, adjust it depending on how you want it, and then round it off if you want to do that. Whereas with this mod, I just basically, for the cards for example, it's basically just automating something that I would do anyway. So for the cards, they always get marked up by 30%. And the items like these card packs and these all is is uh, twenty I believe. It can change now. I just I, do, I might want to like pump it down, but I, instead of again man manually do it, I change it from twenty to ten. So you can see there. So just changing that from thirty down to ten. Yeah, so you can see that the price markups are zero on the absolute win price, but the card markup is 30, so they, they will always, every day, reset to 30% markup on whatever the market price is that day. Again, depending on how your settings are up here. And then the item markup will always be 20%, because again, that's how I find I've managed to get sales on the, uh, like at that aspect. And then you're just rounding, you can also round it up to the nearest specific point that you want. So I have it on one. If it's market price is 770 plus one, two, brings it to 932, you round it, it's nine. So if that's the nearest one, basically 9.3, you round it obviously down to, to nine flat so it just does that and it's just very simple yeah so that's that one there yeah so you've got better collision then which is the next one which is how i was able to have these for example glitch into the door like this so if you press q to move it obviously as you can see there there's certain places where it's restricted but if you press control it removes that restriction basically you can place it anywhere but do you see the way it's still snapping if you press alt now you can free place it anywhere you like and it's just dead handy so i like to snap it just inside the door frame for that so yeah it's just it's just that that's just a handy little mod to be able to have to lay out things exactly as you like but yeah next up is better pos which is better point of sale so what that means basically is when people pay for example with a credit card you have to enter that in manually so again i'm going to do a separate video where i do a full day and a restock and a repurchase of all the all the things and that'll be a separate video a separate shorter video but for now i just wanted to talk about the game a little bit and kind of get my get my little uh my little buzz about it out of the way but yeah essentially all that mod does is, send, is like you can have you have options there so as i should you. yeah so essentially no decimal mode means you don't have to enter in the decimal point if you want to enter them in the main manually but also just auto credit card fill but if you don't even want to enter in the prices manual if you don't even want to use the the credit card machine um, aspect of it you can just auto fill the credit card so that just means when someone walks up and pays with a credit card you just hit space and it just speeds up the process in the till because you do still have to do the change manually but yeah again all the stuff that i'm talking about now that doesn't really make sense in this video i'll talk about it when i do the full kind of day's work in the in the next episode so that is essentially that i think that's all the mods as well yeah hands not full just means that there's usually a limit on packs i think it's like eight packs at a time that you can hold in your hand when you take them out of the boxes like so for example like i'm about to do here to end the video to open some packs place the box down and then there's usually say a limit of eight packs so that's all you'd be able to open at a time and you'd have to go back in then again it's just a waste of time so i just have this mod enabled where i can just open them all and that's as simple as that mod is so what i'll do is i will take say four cards from each pack yeah i was going to do them all i was going to do every bit of stock that i had just to try and get some good cards for the thing but that's just silly and uh you know I'm, I'm thinking more about the video than i am about actually playing the game so i'll just take i'll basically take four from the, the the legendary the epic the rare and the base sets and then also from this box of destiny ones that i have so just take four packs at a time and we'll open them so press or see what we get so not a great pack all dupes and no valuable things total pack total, total value of eight quid so not ideal so one in there that hollow flummy or whatever it's called is uh that was six quid so you know i could sell that on the table then and make some make some bit of profit back but not having the best look <laughs> okay so there you go pygmy or pygmy um that is a gold edition yeah so you can see in that pack there again still not amazing but i do have a card that i didn't already have in my collection so now that's another one added to the, the little folder that i showed earlier on i didn't have that pygmy gold edition cool it's it, it, and now if i get one of them again it won't show that new one but i can then sell that one for the six whatever it was worth so pretty cool so that's the four of those ones gone so i'll pack that up put it back on the shelf and then we'll go four from this legendary box open up here I'd like at least a full art for the video. Okay, so again, same thing. Raison, gold edition, 1178, and I didn't have it. So that's, again, another new one for the collection to add on. So that's pretty cool. The total value of the pack was 18 quid. So that first edition one there must have been worth some money as well. The Katengu or whatever it's called. But, um... 
speaking of speaking of devil Kitengu, there we get a silver what was a silver edition that one which is again something that i needed so pack not not worth a whole lot from these cards here but again adding to the collection there of cards that i didn't have so that's pretty cool absolutely trash well yeah, just gonna say trash i've got a silver edition on the first edition so they add a bit of value but still 8 eight ninety four for the for the value of the pack i think i sell them for more than that so Draconix Gold Edition, worth the tenner, that's pretty good, but again, I don't have it, so I won't be selling it, I'll hold on to that one. And that pack was worth 1647, and again, that would be because of the first edition, Hydronix or whatever it's called there at the end. Pretty cool, that's the Legendary, let's go for the, what was this, the Epic? So, one, two, three, four. So, a Matini, two new ones. 12.97 total value, but again, two new cards for the collection and a couple of dupes that I can put into the bundle, so it's not a bad start. I would like to get something, it'd be cool to get something. Um, if I don't, well, regardless if I get something good or not, I will put in a clip at the end because I did actually have NVIDIA Shadowplay open when I pulled that black ghost card, as they're called. I had that running, so I, I recorded the last few minutes. So there we go, Talonsu EX 2315, so that's actually a pretty decent value. It's not crazy, but again, it's an EX card, it's like one of the special editions or whatever. Again, it's the best card that you can get without it being a full art, so that's pretty sick. Um, and that's all from that pack, and then anything decent. See, that's a cool pack because it's worth 13 quid worth of the cards. So I'm guessing because of the Holofoil Buzzied and the Wall blah blah blah. I still haven't obviously learned them off my heart. The Glorified Cubone, we'll just say there, second from left. Being that first edition, I'm guessing that's worth a few quid as well. But yeah, so that's four from there. So again, we haven't got anything major to end the video on. But yeah, I will include that clip of pulling the, the ghost card, which is just really sick. I, I, don't, I don't think I said that because it was about three o'clock in the morning <laughs> like when I did it. Yeah, not a great start, 3.15. New edition. Again, new card that I didn't have, so that's really good. Again, new one for the collection, but nothing particularly interesting for the video. Nothing that I had, like nothing new and nothing for the video, but again, a gold edition and the first edition, so about a tenner worth of cards there, so you can't overly complain, I guess. But yeah, for the last four, these are just the base packs, which is again, this actually, funny enough, the most expensive card that I have, that one that is like two grand or whatever, that came from a basic pack, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't get anything, it's just very unlikely. So these are absolutely nothing, what, two, three quid worth of cards? Lovely. And then the very next pack you get that um, more or less that worth of just from one card which i also didn't have so again added to the collection not so bad 220 whatever worm or something or other Okay, I wasn't going to do this originally, but what I will do is, since there was absolutely nothing there, I'm going to show you that you can also open these Elite Trainer Box things. So you take one of these out, and the exact same way, and all your cards are there. So I think this is eight packs now out of one, so we'll do this just to end off, because I do, I would love to get something on the video. We shall see. Some good value, 15 quid worth of dupes that I can sell on, so you know, can't really hate too much on that, I suppose. Let's go. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I wish they did still put the names on the full arts. I know they do on some of the ghost cards. But yeah, 80 quid. So this is the kind of higher end stuff that you start moving into at this level. So 80 quid, 30 cents, and it's a full art. So that one I will put into my little shelf out there. I can know. Oh, that's like the lit spire, I want to say, maybe. But anyway, that's a good one. So again, I'll, ta I'll take that now. So full art. So we can we can end the video and have a little have a little joy in our in our pack opening. So nice little new silver edition there. Of the nim Nimbus, the Nimbusy. <laughs> Actually, funny enough, I say the Nimbusy as a joke, but like literally, if you see there down the bottom left, it evolves from Nimbo Culo, which is just cloud ass. <laughs> Culo is Spanish for ass. Nimbo is cloud. I don't know how else you put it. It's cloud ass. Nothing from that. But again, we have the full art, so it's good. I will take it. Yeah, Lit Spire. So that's again, you can see that the first edition of the the full art. Let's swear that we got. So that's that's basically that card's first edition, essentially. <clears throat> got another one actually there. First edition, it's two in a row. Two, 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 one after you. Interesting. Well, good. And that's that. So I can get rid of this now. And yeah, I will go over here and place this. I was keeping this for my most expensive or rarest, rarest cards. Like, so these are all just the full arts. You know, just the full art. But these are like the big, like special fancy ones. But yeah, just for now, just to show you how you do it. So I can go in now, sort it by by price, take it out, and place it. And there you go. <laughs> 
So again, no major reason to be making a video on this. Again, I had, uh, so the update that I'll give you now, I will just basically say that I had a tooth issue uh, this last kind of week or so. So the week before last, when I uploaded every couple of days, that was the start of an idea that I had for the rest of the year to try and do a scheduled upload schedule of Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So Monday would be in a set course of video. Wednesday would be a music video, whether that's sampling, showing off something on Koala, FL Studio Records, something or other. That was the idea. And then on Friday, do another set of courses of video. Or one of these set of courses today is could be like a mix and match of something else that I was doing that week or whatever. That was the general idea that I might have noticed. I did that the first week, three videos in a row. And then, yeah, the tooth issue started kicking in last week. It just early in the week, it started to show its kind of head. And I was like, had a headache and I was tired and I was not on form. Yeah, on Friday was when it got really bad. And then over the weekend, then I just had it. It was just real, real bad. So I had to get it sorted today when I got paid. So that is why there hadn't been a video all week after the good little spell. And then, yeah, I think that's that. So I think uh, that'll be the video for tomorrow. So again, this week is going to be a bit off schedule. So I think tomorrow I'll edit this one and upload this one on TCG Card Shop Sim. Friday, I will do the full day's work and like I'll just record a full like day in the life working the work the job in the game and to show you kind of how the actual the everything pans out in the process again it's not a secret it's not new it's there's videos out there these are the kind of videos that i like to make for me this is what i've been playing as well i'm putting a bunch of time into it same reason why i made videos on fortnite but that's yeah that's something that you can expect on friday and yeah that's about it i don't know if there's anything else oh yeah again so stick around right at the very end i'll snip i'll slip in the, the the clip of getting this yeah luca dense when i pull that so yeah that's about it if you enjoyed it please do leave a thumbs up subscribe for new here thanks for watching and goodbye